Hello, this is Cassie at the Premier Ops Spot, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through HoneyBook's calendar and scheduling feature. So you can see that I'm already in the HoneyBook calendar. If you need to navigate here, you can just go to Tools and then go to Calendar. Um, but there are multiple ways to access your calendar from the homepage as well. You can see that there are some color codings over here on the left. And then you can also see if you have hooked up and integrated a Google Calendar, you'll see that here as well. And that usually shows up as a different color. Um, and then if you have a team, you can also toggle on or off the team calendar. Then you can go to the scheduler. And from here, you can see all the different sessions that you have available. Every session can be made very custom. So for example, you can have a consulting call that is 60 minutes, that is a video call. You can ensure that the time zone is correct, that there's either a rolling window, indefinitely fixed date range, et cetera, for how many um, months the rolling window can go through. You can also color code everything, which I really like. I have my um, leads one color, my clients another color, and then my networking calls another color. You can input information or instructions. Um, you can also decide which reminders to send and or if you want to send them to yourself. Then you can adjust the availability. So in the beginning, when I first set up HoneyBook, I was a little confused by this and annoyed. I thought, why can't I just have one session and have that available for everything? And what I learned was it was actually really nice to customize for each session what my availability was. Because for networking calls, I can limit it to just two per week or four per week or whatever my networking goal is at that time. For client calls, I open up my schedule a lot broader for them. And then for discovery calls, I have that. My free consultations are somewhere in the middle of my networking availability and my client availability. I also can create different types of calls or sessions. So for example, every client that I onboard, I start them off with my strategic ops audit. And that is a long four hour session. And so I can have a separate meeting for that. So you can see that here. And what's great about this is I can actually have this as part of my workflow and my automations. So the reason that you can leverage this many sessions, you might not need this many, a lot of people just do a networking, a discovery call, and then maybe a client call. But if you have um, a very complex service offerings, a suite of service offerings, then you can build out the different sessions that you have based on the process and the workflow that you want your clients or your networking um, connects to go through and then use these different sessions in your smart files or in your automations, which is really nice. Then down here on the bottom, I wanted to show you a really cool um, way to adjust your availability. So one way to adjust your availability, like I showed you, is directly inside the session itself. After you go through all the details, you can adjust your availability for your networking calls. Um, you can also do buffers and minimum days notice. I really like this feature because I am not, I'm a planner. I would not want someone to book at 10 p.m. and me wake up in the morning and be surprised that I have a video call. So I usually require at least two days notice for someone to book with me. Um, you can also toggle on or off if you want team members to be able to take the call and you can do a round robin, which is really nice. But the other way that you can adjust your availability because each session can have its own availability. However, if you have a day off, for example, you can just come to this availability overview. And unfortunately for me, I forgot that to block off my 4th of July. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. You can either go in and edit every single one of these and remove your availability for that particular day that you're off and then uncheck this box because you wouldn't wanna apply that to all Tuesdays, just this particular Tuesday, which is a holiday, and then hit save, and that will remove that session. The other way you can do it is actually go into your Google Calendar and block the day off because there's a two-way integration and a two-way sync between HoneyBook and your Google Calendar. So if you block a day off in your Google Calendar, HoneyBook will know, uh, it will show that day as unavailable for all of the meetings. So a couple different ways that you can do it, but 
doing it in your Google Calendar if you have it integrated and synced is probably faster than going in and removing the availability for all of these sessions individually. So I hope that that helps give you an idea of what's available in the HoneyBook calendar and scheduling features. If you have any questions, feel free to drop it in the comments or comment on the blog post and I'll be sure to answer as soon as I can.